Hi, thanks for joining me for this episode of Dyslexia Solutions. I want to share um, the nine steps. I'm going to jump through some of the progress that we have made with those nine steps, showing you how flexible this reading program is. So when your child is studying phonogram cards, we are going to be introducing new sounds when the child pretty much masters a group of sounds. We're going to retire them with a rubber band. And if we need to bring them back in, we can, but we're going to try to introduce some new sounds. So we always want to refer to have a picture available. And I have a book of pictures that I had created to go with the different consonants. And then we have, you know, the different sounds. We have beautiful cards. If the child struggles with learning it, if the child's not struggling, you don't need the card necessarily, but in this one, we will. So I have a mnemonic. It says, most old, most old trolls and colts are wild but kind. So Orton Gillingham has a model uh, where this is pretty new to introduce. And Orton Gillingham is the model of multisensory reading or the science of reading is the model. So I have the cards, ein, Ost, old, old, ild. So I have, I'll have a child say these sounds because these are phonemes. They're part of larger words. And if the child struggles with this on our next session, I'll take out the um, graphic again until he can say these without, and then I'll retire them. Another um, sound, phoneme that I'm introducing today is actually the ED, uh, which is past tense. Now, he knows that red and bad have ED. So those have the pictures. ED won't have a picture if it's a suffix. So what I'm teaching is if something is in the past, it will have an ED. Sometimes the ED sounds like D. Sometimes it sounds like T. And sometimes it sounds like Ed. And that's what I'm going to show you today in the workbook. So that is step one. Step two are the sound circles. And I'm going to pick um, errors from the previous session to pull down and say the sounds of those circles, uh, the letter sounds. And then we're going to do the plastic letters, which are step three. And I'm going to use those same words. Let the student visualize now. He's building the words. And then step four is reading in the phonics book. But we have something very special in my program. We're on page 15. And page 15 has groups of words that uh, the first eight words all start with H-U. The next four words start with T-R. The next words start with L-I. So sometimes I provide the blend and the child finishes the word. And sometimes I provide the um, beginning sound with the vowel and the child writes it. So first we're gonna have the child read the page and some students might take two sessions to read through the whole page. And then the next time we visit this, we're going to have the child write. So I'm gonna share with you right now what that looks like. I'm going to share my screen. So we have uh, these words. This is on page 15 of my book. The book is a uh, 1B. So it's part of um, the reading, the phonics reading for step four. So the child can listen to music in the left ear or not. So hunt, hunk, husk, huck, hulk, hump, hung, huts. You can see the value of auditory and visual discrimination. And then we have truck, trunk, thrust, trump, lilt, lick, link, lisp, list, lint, Limp, lift, lips. I'm spending a lot of time with this student reminding him 
S is at the end of the word because it's plural for lip. Sorry if this is a little bit unclear, but um, this is really good to use this on the whiteboard. When you do your whiteboard phonemic awareness activity, because we say, what's the first sound of the word lips? What's the last sound of the word lips? And it's S, S. -s. What's the third sound of the word lips? P. So when we have um, the S at the end of a word versus the S is the third sound of the word lisp, these are great auditory and visual discrimination words to put on the whiteboards. If you want to give a child a little bit of a break because he's having a hard time, a hard day, you can use tank and task, things that are a little bit easier. So this has a full uh, page of words grouped with beginning sounds are the same. And then when the child does the spelling test, this isn't the test with the app. This is just one of step four, one, one way we handle step four. So the child will write the ending sounds and I'll do half a page. And I'm really specifying third sound, fourth sound, third sound, fourth sound. He's really getting that drilled in because dyslexic kids want a glancing guess at their words. When they're taught to focus on the third sound and the fourth sound, they're isolating those uh, sounds per letter. And that's really important, but you could see it's not an easy task. So this was two days and we pushed through. Now I noticed when the student got to the word families, I C K I N K I S uh risk I N G, he struggled with it and he struggled with U N G. So I am bringing back the phonogram cards that I put away. I put these away today because he could read them beautifully. And if you remember, I introduced them a couple of weeks ago and we've been practicing this word family, ink, ink, onk, unk, and the ung family, ing, ang, ong, ung. When you find that the student is struggling with writing, bring them back. Now, I haven't practiced with him writing the vowel consonant U's yet. Um, so he, this is what he's practicing now. We haven't written it yet, but I haven't retired it yet. But I'm bringing these out of retirement. He's gonna review the Ng the family. And so that is amazing. So that's actually step four, even though it's a writing exercise. So I wanted to show you that. Okay, so now we, step five is gonna be a whiteboard where you're gonna put uh, legs, or lisp or lips, and you're gonna ask for beginning sound, third sound, ending sound. And I have instructions in my training program how to do that. Step five is gonna be a workbook. So um, because I really wanted to, we were finishing up, let me see something. We were finishing up mental nouns. So I wanna show you that page. So I was teaching what mental nouns are. And if you can touch it, it's a noun, but also placement matters. So in a sentence, uh, when a word is in the beginning of a sentence, it's typically a noun, like honesty is a great policy. So honesty would be a noun but you can't touch it. So we call it a mental noun. And I have him marking it up here. What I do is I pull out my highlighters, orange, pink. And what I do is I have him, I'll just use orange because that's what we used. I have him highlight or underline. Sometimes the highlighters block out the word and I don't like that. So then, then we have the word decision, and you can use it in a sentence. Decisions that are made too quick are not good decisions sometimes. 
So it's it's a mental noun. It's it's concrete. It's the beginning of the sentence, but it is in your head. Soreness. Often when a word, well, when a word ends in ness, it becomes a noun. So we have soreness. Now we have ridiculous. That's not in your head. That's actually a um, adjective. It's an adjective or yeah. So it, it describes something. So we're not going to touch it. Fluffy, describe something. Interruption. That was a rude interruption. So, yep, it's in your mind. It's a mental noun. Then we have fireplace. Oh, that's a noun, but you can touch it. So what I'm going to just do is this. It's a noun, but it's not, it's, you could actually touch it. So it's not a mental noun. Different is a describing word. Bubbly. I always have a student repeat the word after me. Bubbly, it's a describing word. Kindness, there's that ness again. Ness makes it a noun. A decision, that decision was brilliant. You see how it's the subject of your sentence. So it's a noun, but it's a mental noun. Flavored, it, it, that's either gonna be an adjective or it's gonna be a verb, past tense verb. Department, I can go to the department. So that's gonna be a noun, but it's not mental. So I'm gonna say not mental. Childhood, his childhood was terrific, but you don't see it, so it's a mental noun. Disturbed, action word. Substitution, the substitution for cinnamon could be Cumin. Well, it's a men, it's a the substitution. Um, I don't know if you could touch that or not. I don't know what, what if you would call it mental, because you could touch it. Certain um, fever, you can touch a you can touch a head that has shows a fever. So that's not um Sadness, there's that ness again. Absolutely describes a glow, you can see it. Sympathy is an adjective. Oh, sympathy. She had sympathy for the, the boy's accident. So yeah, that is a mental noun. Spice, you can touch it. So it's not mental. Stupidity, that is a noun, but it's a mental noun. Love is a mental noun. Sharpen is a verb. Lining is a noun, but it's not mental. Fuzzy is an adjective. Opinion is a noun, but it's not mental. Imitation, so you get the hang of it. We have a beautiful list that you can look at if you um, order my book on Teachers Pay Teachers, which you can find on my website. So I wanted to show you that. That's the workbook. Then we go to step six, which is another phonemic awareness activity. I'm going to pick a word like bulb. Say bulb. I'm going to have a child say, what's the first sound of bulb? B. What's the last sound of bulb? B. What is the third sound of bulb? Oh, say bulb, bulb. And sometimes if you have a word that you can rhyme, you will. And sometimes say, okay, I'm going to give you a nonsense word. What if I take the first b away and I put t? Will the child be able to say tulb? So that's what, why it's good to le learn these phonemic awareness. Now the next activity is a workbook again. Now I have workbook, for the older kids, I have workbook 5A and I have workbook 5B, but workbook 5B has a lot of pages. Workbook 5B goes up to 68 pages. So I have workbook 5A part one and part two. 
and you can order these on Teachers Pay Teachers. But what I want to show you is how this were this will correspond with the ed having three sounds. So we're going to put the rat jumped into the tunnel. This is a past tense word, but you see how it sounds like t? The rat jumped into the tunnel. Um, we did a lot of this kind of thing with our Minecraft learning adventure last summer, two summers ago, where we taught the kids the different sounds of ED. Um, af after dinner, I asked my sister to hand me my best dress. So the child has to recognize this is just the D by itself. This is past tense, asked, and it sounds like a T. So the direction says, write ED or T or D in the blank and read the sentence and then mark if it sounds like, mark if the ED sounds like D, T or Ed. So let's look on. Mom had mended, past tense, and that sounds like ED. And you can put these little marks if your child can understand that sounds like Ed. Mom had mended it so I could have it for the party. The flag flapped in the stiff wind, just D by itself. So I didn't leave this open because this has a doubling rule of flap and I didn't wanna go do that yet. The same with the word slipped. I slipped on a wet spot in the kitchen and landed on my bum. So that sounds like Ed. We have a name Ed in English. What if we said Ed landed on his bum? That could be kind of confusing for kids, right? We discussed her bad manners, discussed D. You see how it just sounds like the sound D? She fixed the blender when it quit running. She fixed. So I hear that T again. Um, list the things you want me to get. List. That's only the letter T. She lacked the skill to sing well. She lacked. Sounded like T. There is no wind after sunset. T and D. T doesn't work and ED won't work. Um, he drove past the car at 50 and got a ticket. So pass. I got the last chunk of fudge at the party. See, some of these words only require the T. So we're teaching the child the T letter versus the sound of T for the past tense, which uses ED. Hope this is making a lot of sense to you. Shortly after his cut was stitched, stitched, there's that T sound again. The stitches itched. And that sounds like T again, itched. He pitched a no hitter in, uh, in his last year on the team. And then my sister fished her doll out of the puddle where it fell. Fished, fished. There's a lot of T sounds there. So again, you could put these sound marks around your sound if your child, you know, needs that extra help. So when I finished this exercise, the student said, hey, I did really good, didn't I? And I know I gave him a lot of help with it. So the neat thing about my workbooks is you can, you get the digital files when I give you the workbooks. So you can print out any page you want, print it out and let it become a work page. I'm gonna stop my share. It could become a work page for the next session, which is what I'm gonna do. 
So um, this little kiddo is going to fill that in on Friday and he's going to let, let me demonstrate his um, mastery. And I want him to have that victory. I want him to be able to demonstrate mastery. So digital files are yours. The, the hard copies are yours. When you order my program, go to dys-sol.com. Look under what we have. It's right on the homepage. I'm Dr. Marianne Cintron. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. And if you haven't already liked and subscribed, please do that now. And please share this with a teacher or a homeschool parent. And I, I know this is going to bless you. So until next week, we'll do another demonstration of a lesson. Bye-bye now.